I am back. Awoken from my hibernation. I lie. I ha I was busy. And listen, this week was Camilla. All right. I've been busy with more uh, worth wild things to do than making Camilla videos. But uh, amazing here got me a video. I wasn't even going to upload this week because I was just going to wait for the next patch. Uh, but we got through for with the vid, vid for the week. I just woke up. I haven't had caffeine yet, so this video might be a disaster. But the Sacred Treasure podcast just posted 10 hours ago, just posted. Top 10 most dominant units in their prime. And I love making videos dunking on their tier lists. But let's see. This one looks pretty good, actually. This one looks pretty good. So far, I, I just took a glance. I haven't uh, deeply stared into it. But I wanted to, uh, let me open this in a new tab so we can zoom in properly. I wanted to take a look at this list and pick out some flaws here. So this is, this is a fun one because obviously throughout the years we've had very, very dominant metas. And I think a lot of people might think of a specific one when they think of the quintessential Grand Cross meta, right? What is the meta that you you think of when you think of a powerful unit in Grand Cross? So, at the honorable mentions, I have a, quite a list. I'm, I would like to uh, maybe think of a unit that I'm forgetting as I go through this, but I don't know if I will remember any. Um, I mean, out of a glance here, there's no Red Arthur. I think Red Arthur is very, very worth being here. There's Red Ascanor, which fair enough, right? But Red Arthur... You might not remember, but he was meta even outside of the mono red team back in the day. Like, he was just a really good unit in general, right? So I think that's, uh, that would be worth the honorable mention, but that's a little bit of a nitpick right here. Uh, let's actually, let's actually go up here. So they have, <laughs> at the very top of the list, God Link Tarmiel. That is very reasonable, I think, to include, because if you remember... There is Grand Cross before and after Red Tarmio. You know, this character, I accept. This character, right here. Red Festival DN. One of the worst releases of all time. I'm not saying in terms of uh, hype, although it was. But mainly, I mean, compared to now, this was super hype, but <laughs> compared to the OCs, this was super hype. <laughs> but uh, in terms of unit quality and how good they were in the meta, this character was hor horrific. It was just a very mediocre character. And at the time, I mean, even now, festival units, dude, they are the cream of the top. Like, they are the best units in the game. And this character being mediocre was just very strange even, right? But then, oh, was it was it the next banner? It was almost, if not the next banner, pretty much right after. I'm just gonna pull out the uh, the banner, so I'm not mistaken. If not the the very following banner, it was the banner right. Uh, okay, right here. Yep, right here. So, the end released February of 2022. It wasn't the next banner. There was like two banners in between, but then Tarmiel released, and all of a sudden he was so good with defensive characters that the end became the best unit in the game. Dude, I remember this vividly. This was a time to be a Grand Cross player because all the weeks I spent shitting on this unit before Red Tarmiel, and then people come back to my comments and be like, <laughs> well, you're calling her trash? She's the best unit in the game. Like, <laughs> How am I supposed to know they're gonna release the most stupid unit in the game? <laughs> Red Tarmio. Uh, to this day, is he as much of a menace as he was back in the day? Not really, because of just how units work, but still, still a menace in a way, right? You still have it on, my, on your team. Every team that you play, you're gonna have Red Tarmio no matter what. I think it's uh, very fitting to put him at the very top, because he's forever meta, unless they make a better Tarmiel link, because they, they could make better links, right? 
they've made the Mile Link. I mean, it's not a better Link, but you know, it's a, it's a different uh, Link. But no matter what, you're always going to have one of your characters with a Tar Meow Link, unless they somehow make a better Tar Meow Link so you can't run both Links at the same time. Alright, number one, they have Bon. Is Bon the number one most dominant unit of all time? Let's, let's take a look again, right? So, Bon released in 2021. It was the anniversary unit. He dominated until... Margaret. And Kusok, right? So... Bon released May. Margaret and Kusok released July, end of July, beginning of August. But here's the thing, right? So Margaret, if you uh, remember, where do they have them on, on the list? Honorable mentions? Yes. Margaret was the bastion in the game post buff. When she first dropped, they them first dropped. Uh, <laughs> uh, she was pretty bad. Uh, but then they, they buffed her tremendously and, and she became like the bastion in the game. Funnily enough, they don't have Kusok here, but Kusok was very dominant as well. He's just not as remembered because it's Kusok, but Kusok dominated Bond teams. It was like a anti-meta unit, right? So maybe fair enough that he wasn't dominant, but he was anti-meta. But yeah, Kusok also completely dominated Bond teams. And right after the Brynhildr and the end here, they release Holy Relics, and just like that, Bond is back. <laughs> it was like, he left for three weeks or something. <laughs> like a month, essentially, yeah. He was out of commission for like a month, not being the best thing in the game. And then they were like, you're back. As, dude, why? Why do they do this? To this day, we don't know. But yeah, they release Relics. Bon got a very powerful Holy Relic. And then... Terry released. Bon was losing steam with each passing up day. Or not really, like these, these characters aren't even good. But he just felt like that back then. Like people were, people were using like Kusok very well against Bon and Margaret as well. Uh, so it wasn't like Bon was 100% of teams, but he was majority, right? But then Terry released, and it was like, another buff for Bon. So Bon became even better, even more dominant. At that point, he was like 90% of the top teams. Playing top 100 back then, because I, I played top 100 at this point. It was every every match was Bon. It was Bon, Terry, Twigo in the front. Because then you'd have the Twigo taunt with the Holy Relic. Yeah, Twigo Relic also released as well. Which was a major, major thing for Bon. Dude, Bon is Bon is deserving of number one. Bon is deserving of number one. It's just crazy the how much they stretched this unit in in the meta. How long he lasted in the meta, and then um, King release. King King was really good against Bon. Uh, and then Melee released, and Melee destroyed King. So unfortunately King got taken out, and Bond kind of resurfaced. But then, they had the end. Where is it? Reinhard. <laughs> then Reinhard releases, and Bond is back! <laughs> uh, yeah, now, li listen. That was a fun time. It wasn't really. Bon was very annoying, but... It's just funny looking back at how much they they tried keeping him alive. I think number one is fair. Bon... Histor if you look at the history, Bon is just absurd. Is is I, I think a big criteria for a list like this is how much better they were than everything else that there was in the game at the time. And I would say, like, for a majority of Bond's life, there were units that were good. Like, for example, uh, if you go back to Bond here, there was Margaret and Kusok right after, and they were good counters against Bond. It's not like, for the longest time, there wasn't anything, but just the amount of times that he came back and was number one is... is 
It's pretty insane. Like, even if you think, oh, that, that wasn't really the Bond team. It was the Terry team. Oh, it, was, it wasn't really the Bond team. It was the, uh, the Reinhardt team. It doesn't matter. If you didn't have Bond, it wasn't the team, you know? Whatever. Number two, they have Blue Askenor. That's an interesting choice. I, I don't think I would have Blue Askenor in number two. I think I would have Goddess Liz. Personally. Goddess Liz was the... Is she still the worst release of all time? Maybe. Maybe. In terms of how toxic she was for the landscape of the game, I think so. Yeah, because, listen, if you weren't there when Elizabeth came out, the revive, man. It just, the game completely flipped upside down because the way you could stall matches and get cheap wins with this unit was just unreal. It was just unreal. I think Liz deserves number two over Askenor. Yeah, Askenor was very powerful. And he also lasted in the meta quite a long time. But it's just the, the way Goddess Liz felt. Because you, you gotta keep in mind, I, I think back then, power creep was even worse than it is now. Where festivals were just coming out. She was the second festival to ever release. Lost Vein was the first one. Which, I think Lost Vein should be number above, but... Lost Vein was the first one. Goddess was the second one. And they ran, you ran them both together, right? And they were so much better than everything else in the game. There was no other team. There just simply was no other team. Until Festival King released. It was just... It wasn't as long-lasting as Bon, I would say, but the... The meta was just horrendous. It was probably the worst meta in the game's history. So I, I would have Liz number two. Would I have Asker number three? I think I'd have. I think I'd have Lost Vein number three. Because you gotta also remember, Lost Vein was there with Liz, right? Now the the thing is, Askenor. I know I'm flashbanging you every time I pull this list, but... Eskinor, he released at the, uh, sort of like towards the end of 2020. One thing that did help him out was the fact that Assault Melee was garbage, right? Assault Melee was not all that powerful. He was powerful for like a week, until people realized how he worked. And then, uh, <laughs> Lamau. I mean, nowadays, <laughs> Assault Melee is in a much better position than <laughs> Blue Eskinor. <laughs> Somehow, but he was garbage back then, right? I feel like Askenor did also have a longer lasting lifetime than most other festivals because you, if you look at it, right, right? Assault Melee was actually supposed to cut him off. It really was. His type advantage against Askenor, he was supposed to cut him off. If you look at other characters we've had in this time release, like we have uh, King and Trader Mally. Trader Mally cut King off. It, 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 King was super powerful for this whole like month. He was the best by far unit in the game. And then Trader Mally came out and it was like, goodbye King. Goodbye. Uh, and then you look at the, the following year in 2022, same thing. Like Askenor was cut off by Purgatory Mally. It wasn't entirely, but it was very, very, very cut off by Purgatory Mally. And in 2023, uh, Elizabeth, like Liz, was cut off by the Winking Melee. It's like, November Festival is always really good, but then the December Festival cuts them off. Every time. And I am... I'm guaranteeing you that was supposed to happen here, but it didn't. Because I guess they missed the mark of Assault Melee, they just didn't plan him very well. And then Merlin... I mean, Merlin was very good, but really made Merlin meta was this right here. It was the Amelia banner, right? And then you look at um, some of the following releases. We have Excalibur, Arthur, and Bond, which actually brought back Askenor quite a bit. Yeah, I think Askenor might be a solid number three if you look at how long he lasted in the meta, but I would say like the period where he was dominant dominant, it wasn't that long. I think as soon as Merlin came out, he wasn't like obliterating everything on his path or anything like that. Demon King Melee. No, sorry. Just Demon Melee. 
<laughs> the King Mally's somewhere here, I'm assuming. In the honorable mention. Demon Mally. Yeah, Blue Demon Mally. Again, it was a period of time where units weren't all that good. So, just having a unit that was very powerful completely broke the game. Again, uh, <laughs> I hate bringing up the flashbang every time, but... Demon Mally came out right after Lilia, so they, they, these two came together, right? So, you could say they should be together in the same tier, because if you didn't use Lilia, Demon Mally wasn't very good. But, until Valenti, you could not play the game. And this was something that global players never got to experience, by the way, because Valenti came out before Demon Mally. On global, they actually made... It was probably good that they did that. That they released Valenti, the counter for Demon Mally, before the unit even released. Uh, because Dear Mally, I'm, I, I'm telling you, you weren't there, but he would just obliterate every team with one or two attacks. And I guess there are units in the game that you could say do that. Even <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this guy, you can say he does that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'm thinking, I don't know if Dear Mally deserves to be that high. Just because as soon as Valenti came out, it was kind of over. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if he deserves. His meta was like dominant. Don't get me wrong, like it was dominant, but it wasn't very long. And on global, like I think you should also take global into account as well. Global never even got to see his meta. He never he never even existed on global essentially. I don't know if he deserves I think he should be an honorable mention. Like, just, just thinking about, you know, the criteria for Bon, I think, being number one is just how long he lasted, right? Because even after he wasn't the main character on the team, he was still, you know, the meta. Like, Bon was meta for so long. Melly was meta for, like, two weeks? A month. A month? And then, I mean, Valenti, it wasn't like it instantly ended, but Melly just kind of morphed into other teams. It was like um, Melly, Red Ascanor, and Lilia, and everyone just kind of ran that, right? Mm. I guess... Yeah, I'm trying to think of Melly as like the main character on the team for the qualification. But maybe, you know, since I was talking about Bond being like always oh, the Ryan Hard team, but Bond is like there, right, as the, the support unit. I guess Dune Melly also fits in there, because as soon as Red Askinor came out, that was what happened. It was uh, Red Askinor, Melly, and Lilia. And you even use Red King in the back, which was a counter to Melly, until I would say Astarosa was kind of the end of it. Esther also really ended that meta because the counters were just too, were just too good. Esther also was super dominant back then. Yeah, he was dominant until when? Until Lost Vein, yeah. And then Lost Vein cut him off, but... I just wouldn't put him 4. I probably would have put him like 9 or 10. Because you gotta think, like, yeah, it was back then, because it was so new, having such a dominant character felt, like, that much more impactful. But, you look at it like Demiurge, and I would say he is just as dominant right now in the game as Demon Mally was back then. And like, why is he number 10? We don't know how long Demiurge is gonna last, to be fair. But you can say the same about... I mean, I would say Lost Vein had a longer lasting meta period than Demon King Melly as well. I like the uh the Galfer here. King is an odd one. I'm not gonna lie. Cause how long did King last in the meta? So let's say King released with the game and he was meta until uh Green Askinor. So that was September, June to September, and even after Askinor, he was still good. Like he was still 
he was he was still part of teams, right? When did he really get cut off? It was Melly. It was it was the King Melly. Yeah. I would also just put him like either at the bottom or honorable mention. Cause you 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 gotta think if you're thinking of time, right? If you think of period of time in which a character was meta, think of Estorosa. Dude. Estorosa? Released was it 2022? August of 2022. And he was meta until I mean on and off, right? Like he, he was meta in every demon release. So it was July of 2022 and he was meta. This whole period, like this whole period he was meta. This whole period. The whole year. Even when Ascar came out, like he, he took a break. <laughs> and then Purgatory Meta came out and he was back, right? And then you go. You know, th this whole period, demons were meta, this whole period. Mm, keep going, keep going. Bond released, right? Took a bit of a break, and then Demon King released, and he's back. Like, I think Estorosa is much more deserving to be in the top 10 than... than King. Yeah. And even Sario, like, I, I think Estorosa should be, like, number 5 or something. I'm trying to think if Demon King Melly is worth is worth being there because he's so broken. Maybe he is. Again, you're thinking of time. Demon King Melly came out December of last year. He's still meta. It's been nine months. He's still meta. In one way or another, he's still meta. Is he's either meta on the Demon Team or the Sin Team, and he's meta currently in the Demon Team. With Demiurge. Like he if Demiurge is in the list, so should be the Amelie. Like that that's the thing. I think there's a lot of nostalgia like in this list, but if you look at the at the periods of time in which these characters were meta compared to now, there is clearly like a like a dominance that characters have that isn't being stated. Like, you can think, oh, Demon King Melly, he has competition, which is fair, right? We have Tor and stuff like that. But he was he also was, like, pretty much without competition for months. It is a very difficult list to make. It is a very difficult list. Personally, is there a template for this? Yeah, I wouldn't say the list is bad, but I think there's a, for one, a lot of nostalgia. Like, I don't think, yeah, King was very dominant, but, like, the period of time isn't even comparable to these characters like Asterosa. It's just not even comparable. And then Demiurge, like... I think if Demiurge is here... You know... <laughs> Demon King Melly should be here. Like, the, yeah, Demiurge is OP as hell. Right now. Well, yeah, sure. But, like... Demon King Melly... Remember when Demon King Melly first dropped? It was so much more crazy than Demiurges right now. It was. It really was. I think there's a lot... This is the most recency bias placement I've ever seen, this Demiurge. <laughs> I like it, because he is really OP, but like, there's a lot of recency bias, bro. So much recency bias. Uh, I haven't commented on these right here. Ascanor and Sauri. I think Ascanor is... There, especially if you if you count his LR form as well as an extension of his uh, meta, also Lost Vein. If you count his LR form, Sario. I'm trying to think, how long was Sario meta for? Because uh, he came out right here, right? It was like 2021. Am I tripping? Wasn't it 2021? Was it 20? No, it was 2021. It was somewhere here. Maybe I'm tripping. It wasn't 20. No, it was 2020. <gasps> really? I thought it was 2021. Uh, I think of 2020 as like the first real year of year of Grand Cross. Some of the characters, I'm like, there's no way they released in 2020. That's crazy. They released before Ascanor. I could have sworn Tarmia and Saga released after Ascanor. Wow. 
But yeah, Sario, I mean, he paired up well with Ascanor as well. He paired up really well with Ascanor. I guess they were meta until this right here, Merlin, Emilia. You also gotta take into account, like, Merlin and Emilia, they were hyper meta until Bon, right? Like, you're thinking, okay, if Demon, if Demon Melly was to be, like, accounted for this list, I think Mer Merlin should also be. I think they're in the same level of um, dominance plus period. Oh no, I, 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 I'm just amazed that you're just sitting here. The recency bias is insane. It's insane. Demon King Melee should be somewhere here. But the list is good. It's much better than some of the others they've done, so... Um, I don't have any templates. I'll leave a, a template for you guys in the description to mess around with this, but they didn't leave one. Also, by the way, how is how is he on a real mission? Like, I know... I know that uh, Grimoire, Blue Grimoire was like fun for like a week until they nerfed him, but... Putting Grimoire honorable mention, but not some other characters is kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, like, not putting Red Arthur or putting him is kind of crazy. This is good, though. 